make sense on how Delhi's auction has been. Yeah, I was a little bit confused with, you know, them in that sort of bidding war for Riley Rousseau. Um, but they'll be very happy with the Harry Brook, uh, Brook pick up at four crore. Um, you know, he's a, he's a very, very good player and uh, will fit in nicely in that middle order where he belongs. He, he's certainly not a, at this stage in his career, he's not a, a top order player. He's well suited at four and five. Uh, they that they quite rightly needed to cover off the keeping options both overseas and also local, which they've done well. And I think the Joe Richardson um, selection is a good one. Um, he's a highly skilled pace bowler, um, and he's back to full fitness. Uh, he's, he's bowling particularly well in his comeback over the last few weeks here in Australia. And Ricky Ponting would have had a, a very very close eye on his progress there. So. You know they've had a they've had a pretty steady um, uh, auction I reckon. Tristan Stubbs is another one they picked up at base price, uh, another power hitter which I suppose uh, they're seeing as a replacement for Rodman Power. So they'll sort of consider that as a financial win. But uh, yeah, that, they've had a, a had a busy auction, but a, a, a pretty sound one. Is Harry Brook going to boss it at his new franchise at a much lower fee? Well, I think that the crucial thing is whether Ricky Ponting gives him a more stable role than he had last year. He was up and down the order at some rises, and I, I think it, it ended up being that that century hit at Eden Gardens ended up being a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a curse for him in, in, in some sense, in that he, he ended up being used out of position for far more of the season than he probably should have. I think, as I see it, Delhi's fortunes are going to rely a lot on uh, a couple of Indian players who were missing. Well, one of them went missing last year in Prithvi Shaw and the other one was missing due to that horrible car uh, car accident in Rishabh Pant. So uh, if those two can come back and find the sort of form that we know they're capable of, they'll have a great season. If not, who knows? Is this Punjab team stronger after the end of this auction? I think they would have liked uh, Shah Rukh Khan there. Uh, probably would have made them a little bit more stronger considering he was a finisher. Uh, an Indian finisher is, is a rare commodity. Uh, but I think they'll be happy. They, they bought the price, uh, they bought all the players for a higher price, uh, but I think they'll be happy with the players that they've got. I think Harshal Patel is arguably probably the best bowling option that was available amongst all the Indian uh, players in the auction. Um, you know, he's got a, a wealth of experience. You know, you get him on a slower track as well. He's a, he can be, a, you know, very much a handful. Uh, so forget, I suppose, the 11.75 price tag. It's more about, you know, they've, they've got, you know, a secure and experienced uh, domestic player that will certainly fit into their playing 11. Story of CSK? Every base has been covered coming into the auction. Ben Stokes release, they get two people for the price of one, right? With Rachin and Daryl Mitchell. Uh, they had to buy a replacement for Ambati Raidu. They get uh, Samir Rizvi in. They had to get a replacement for the injury-prone Matisha Patirana. They get Mustafiz or Rahman in. Uh, they had to get a seam bowling all-rounder in because they, they've got Mukesh Chaudhary injured. They've got Shardul Thakur in. Mm. So I don't see any base that's left uncovered. I mean, every aspect of it is covered. The best part of the auction was they were just absolutely calm, cool. They knew who they had to go after. Didn't get into any frenzied bidding except for Samir Rizvi. And it was it was all like you know child's play. I mean, it's almost a demeanor, typical CSK of the uh, yeah. the group there at the auction. Of the captain and so, the coach. So uh, yeah. excellent auction for them. Most bases covered. They look really really strong. I, I think Daryl Mitchell will probably be the, the preferred choice, not purely because of the price they paid for him. I, I think him being a right hander with all the left handers in that middle order, he sits quite well at number five or even number four, um, and he, he provides that sort of stable base for that, uh, you know, the likes of, um, you know, Shubham Dubey to, you know, to do his, uh, to do his thing and, and Jadeja and, and Dhoni obviously at the back end. So, you know, I think they've, uh, you know, I agree that they've got most um, bases covered. If, if any sort of situation arises, they've got uh, someone to cover it. You know, their real pick, pick of the day was uh, Shadow Tucker for four. I thought that was an absolute steal and it plugged uh, an important hole for them. Having MS Dhoni, uh, you know, makes your job a lot easier. You know, whatever team they pick in the auction, uh, it doesn't matter. But I thought they picked uh, very smartly. Uh, I thought probably they'll go uh, for Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, uh, it's very unlike, you know, how they went after Samir Rizvi, uh, somebody so young. 
that that's not about how CSK operates. So I thought they'll probably go with Shahrukh, local boy. Yeah. Uh, but I think they've got most bases covered anyway. Thoughts on the Mumbai auction when they came in with very little? I think they've done pretty well considering they only had 17.75 crore. Uh, they, they obviously couldn't go for a high profile experienced pace bowler in Stark or Cummins or anyone of, of that nature purely on, on the basis of what they had available financially. So the, the only challenge for them is the unknown of how new fast bowlers, yes, they're talented, yes, they're exciting, but how they first adapt to the IPL because the IPL is a completely different ball game when it comes to pressure. Uh, playing for Mumbai is another pressure as well. So it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, they integrate. That's Kutsir and Madashanka and Tashara, how they integrate into IPL cricket and how Mumbai manage them. Look at that team, Tom Moody. They came in with a lot of work to do. Have they done most of it? Well, they, they've done one of the most important things and they've got a match winner in Mitch Stark. They ideally uh, would have liked to have paid, you know, five or six crore less than they had to. But that, you know, obviously compromised the rest of their uh, their option. But I think um, they've got one main base covered and they were quite clever in the way they picked up a few other pieces to make up the balance of their side. I, I still feel uh, they don't look as strong as a lot of the other teams. Um, and a lot of that's down to the fact that they were backed into a corner um, with the, the whole Mitch Stark uh, process how that sort of played out. They got to a point where they couldn't um, pull out of that and because there was no other bowler of that calibre left in the option. I think uh, Chetan Sakaria is a good buy, uh, you know, a good value by Indian left-arm seamer, swings the ball back in. Uh, we earlier spoke about uh, issues with his action. The BCCI has since clarified that uh, it was uh, a mistake on their part to actually get him into that suspect action list. So he's clear of that. So Chetan Sakaria is, is a good buy in terms of the uncap. Uh, the big standout, of course, is their focus on spin. Uh, they've added Mujibu Rahman at his base price in the accelerated round, which also shows up the spin option, which increasingly gives us mm. a peek into the way they're going to be planning for the season ahead. Spin to win is clearly going to be the mantra at Eden Gardens. The acquisition of Travis Head, one in Duhasaranga, as well as Pat Cummins at that high price, how does that shift who SRH's first choice overseas players are? Uh, all I can say is good luck picking the 11. I think it's an outstanding squad that they've put together. Um, and what created that uh, platform was the, the absolute steal of Hasaranga at 1.5 crore. Uh, that's as big a story, in my view, as Mitchell Stark's 24 plus crore. I think the, the Hasaranga is an absolute steal. That, then, that, that just opened up the door for them to have a lot of flexibility around building uh, a formidable uh, squad. But the real challenge that Sun, uh, Sunrise will have is what are the four overseas players they're going to play and how, are they, how is their top order going to stack up? Because I did hear a, a little bit of footage of Matai Mirali Duran saying that Travis Head will open the batting. So that then is a clear statement that either Abhishek Sharma Mayank Agarwal or Rahul Tripathi are not batting, you know, at that position one or two. Assuming Travis Head is going to be in that team, what's Sunrise's opening team, opening combination for you? I think Abhishek Sharma is in very good form, so is Mayank yeah. Agarwal. Wasn't he recently you... player of the series as well at, yeah. uh, uh, at Mushtaq Ali, I think it was? Or uh, Vijay yeah, he had a good Vijay Hazari. Vijay Hazari, yeah. sorry, yeah. yes, yes was him. So, I mean... One, two, three was, was you know, picked himself. Uh, so now Travis had come. So it's it's kind of a confusion. Again, who captains the side uh, is another question. If Aidan Makram is a captain, then, you know, who you pick, whether mm -hmm. Pat Cummins plays or, or you know, Hasaranga, uh, that's another question. They needed to strengthen their spin bowling attack, which they did uh, yeah. with, with the Indian as well as the overseas. Uh, but I think that you might see uh, the captaincy shift in, in this uh, franchise. Uh, yep. You might see Possibly. Pat Cummins captain. Again, the experience of him captaining in, in this format uh, is very little. He's captain test and one days. Mm. He hasn't captained in this format. So that's going to be a challenge. But I think they've put together a very good side. Now, RCB fans will be looking at this team, Tom Moody, and saying, we let go of Harshal and Hasaranga, and we've replaced them with Dayal, Joseph, Tom Curran, 
And well, Lockie Ferguson, if you want to put him in that, picked up late in the accelerated round. Is that is that a win? Uh, no, I don't think it's a win at all. I think they're back to where they started, to be honest with you. Um, I think that the Cameron Green trade compromised their whole auction and what they possibly could have done and what they possibly needed to do in this auction to, uh, to you know, to solve their issue being, um, you know, having such a poor record at home. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's a bad side because they both such a, an incredible batting lineup and some and some wonderful match winners in there. But again, um, you know, there's there's no one that really stands out to me as as someone that's going to be able to take wickets, be able to close games effectively, consistently, um, you know, in, in the recruitment that they've made. It could have been a different auction had they got stuck. Is this, was this wise from the Titans in your mind? Uh, I think they've come out well, considering they didn't push uh, for Stark one more, you know, one more bid or, or another two bids, because they certainly could have afforded to. Uh, but they've come out well um, from that. The one thing that really stands out uh, for me looking at the, the building of this squad throughout the auction is that I think they have looked at this impact player rule and have tried to cover for Hardik Pandya's loss through the purchase of Umesh Yadav and Shahrukh Khan. So, you know, that you could probably just see now that that's going to be the natural and you know uh, impact player swap over so they've effectively got a, a pace bowler in there in their outfit and they've got a power hitter that's going to bat number six so you know to me they've they've picked up you know quite a few good ball, uh, buys there uh, uh, tiagi i think is a good get at six, 60 lakh i think the, you know there's a lot of upside there he can bowl 140 plus he's still very raw and green but he, you know all he needs is you know that breakthrough season and having ashish nearer you know, overseeing his progress won't be a bad thing. Spencer Johnson, that's a high price for an unproven um, uh, overseas player in in the IPL. Uh, he hasn't played a lot of cricket, Spencer Johnson. Mm. There's no question of his uh, talent. Um, he's got a lot of that. He's six foot six, six foot seven, can swing the ball, bowls high pace, but unproven. Of the five players that they bought, uh, you know, Roman Powell is the only one who might fit into this 11. Uh, all the others are the backup players uh, and uh, unknown quantity as well, especially in this, uh, you know, league. Uh, Shubham Dubey again, untested. Tom Kolo Cadmore hasn't played. Uh, Abid Mushtaq. I mean, most of them, even Donovan Ferreira, who's, yeah. who's been around, hasn't played. So they, they kind of sorted their 11 out, uh, but the backup players, you know, there's still question mark over it. I think it's a slightly stronger uh, side, purely not on what's happened today, what happened in the trade. Uh, I think Abish uh, Khan has given them, I, I suppose, in a really important sort of uh, plug the hole in their bowling attack. Uh, Robman Powell, I like that selection. He will certainly, you know, provide them with a real impact sort of batting at six, along with Hetmeyer. Uh, but the, the other selections in today's auction didn't, to me, make a lot of sense. Uh, I would have thought they may have gone for an all-rounder, uh, whether that be to buy back Jason Holder or, you know, Daniel Sams or someone of that nature, just to give them the flexibility around their selection table. Um, you know, Tom Cole of Padmore may be sort of earmarked as a, a really cheap op option to replace Butler if there's any injury is issues there at the top of the order. They're relying a lot on their Indian buys today. Is that the story for Lucknow, Shashank? Yeah, absolutely. Ashwin Kulkarni is a very good buy at base price, 20 lakh. A uh, young Indian player may not get to start because you've got Devdat Padikal who's come in uh, through the uh, the preseason trade. So so I think he'll have to wait his turn. But I think uh, they've, they've, they've got, they had most bases covered coming into the auction. So today was just a you know a day out to have fun at the auction yeah. and pick up whoever they thought just needed to fill in fill in the gap so they've done pretty well uh the indian players of course m siddharth is a very good buy yeah. uh and lucknow spinning pitches uh he's he could come into the mix sure. uh i think his biggest strength is uh, like his uh uh senior partner at tamil nadu sai kishore he can bowl across uh different faces in the t20s he's had a lot of success uh game time has been elusive only because of team combination there but i think uh you know luck if there's one team that mm. could afford opportunities uh, to him, it's it's LSG. The Willie Turner 
um, selections to me screams out Justin Langer because both those two players have worked with Justin Langer at the Perth Scorchers for a number of years. Uh, Ashton Turner more so than David Willey. Willey, I think, had two seasons, successful seasons with uh, uh, Justin Langer at the Perth Scorchers. You know, both at base price, both sort of covering, um, you know, Willey will cover for Stoinis and Turner will just offer a, a batting option if they're looking for an alternative finisher who's, um, you know, who's reliable and has got an enormous amount of experience. Thank you.